Okay, so um, I'm going to try and fill in a few of the gaps that, that, um, that sort of are maybe uh, a bit sort of more towards UHF, VHF. Um, Martin's did a pretty good job of covering pretty much all that. Um, so, uh, why do we contest? Um, no one really seems to know sort of why. Look, there's a, there's a few things there. Um, we, as Martin said in his last thing, it's sort of to have a bit of fun, which I think is good. Uh, you can learn some new skills, um, get to know people, and, and get to know the operation of, of your station and how well it works and sometimes how badly it works. Um, co uh, contributes to the collective group, like the club or the state or, or, or whatever. Um, as Martin alluded to, I don't have a folder that thick. I probably have two or three certificates, but... Um, some wall art's always good, and um, to sort of win and get your name in the magazines always sort of pretty cool. Winning's always nice. Um, the contests there are pretty much the ones that the WIA um, sort of endorse. Um, big one on the Remembrance Day, John Moyle, and of course the, the f uh, Field Days, uh, and the Ross Hull Memorial, which this year I've tried to have a go at I think all of those and so far not going too badly but they're all sort of pretty um pretty popular ones but I think a significant number of people in this room have been involved with especially the, the RD um, so how to get involved um, if, if you're new just sort of keep your ear to the ground and maybe ask sort of people I became involved I think if I just listening to a bit of banter on, on two metres and 70 centimetres, thinking, oh, what's all this all about? And you sort of listen to some people, and I can't remember who the people were, but um, they sort of sounded sort of very pro, and I thought, oh, well, let's sort of try and learn a bit. And I was probably pretty much in the second. I sort of didn't really jump in to try and win, but thought I'd just popped in and gave out a few contacts, and, and then decided this was sort of pretty cool fun, so I thought I'd have a bit of a, a go at trying to get a bit better at it. And um, yeah, offering assistance to new people because um, we're all sort of new at some point, and it's nice to it's nice to sort of um, take someone under your wing and sort of maybe show them a bit, and they could well be the next the next um, sort of contest champion. Um, so the few things you don't need to do to uh, be good at VHF UHF contesting, having one of those probably would be nice, but you don't really need it. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Tell a uni to keep their eye on it. <laughs> um, so, lots of people think you need big antennas with rotators and stuff. You really don't. An omni will work just quite well. Um, you don't need amplifiers. Um, position, position, position. Um, we sort of VHF, UHF, always just trying to get into a good spot. Um, multi mode radios are nice, but two metre handhelds, two metre mobiles are just great. Um, new flash radios, again, are just nice. To have but you don't need them. Um, of course QSL cards. I think probably one of the easiest way to get into to doing it is to just jump in your car and just go up the mountain or go somewhere sort of nice and maybe make a bit of a day of it, have a bit of a picnic lunch and sort of play radios. Not up the mountain, that's where you'll be. Yes, yeah, keep, keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. So um, well it is required, there's a few things there that I'm sure everybody sort of uh, can relate to. Um, have to be sort of pretty enthusiastic, probably a mild bit of silliness as you get into it a bit further, especially the guy with the bottles, like, wow, that's, that's pretty keen. Um, try and sort of stay cool, like most of the contests, especially on VHF and UHF, they're pretty sort of friendly, there's not too much arguing for channels and stuff, eh? Hey? Everyone, every man breeds the sort of thing. I've heard some of the contests on, on HF, trust me, ours are pretty, pretty tame on. <laughs> um, Quite polite, really. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Maybe when you don't press the mic button, there might be a few things muttered under one's breath, but, you know, that's, that's all in the spirit. Um, so, look, I think uh, the biggest motivation, trying to get your, your, your gear organised, like, we're all a bit sort of slack. I know I am sometimes, it's like the RD contest in two weeks and... I've got tons of things to do, but um, as I'm sure probably nearly everybody here has got the same thing, a to-do list. Lure us into a false sense of security with this 
You reckon? Now when your tactics over the years. <laughs> yeah, all the multipliers. Just have to hear the just, just have to hear the JUF on the bands. That's what we need. So look, um need to obviously have it. Yeah. Be, uh, be willing to have a bit of a go. Um some patience to obviously because everybody's new, so sometimes it's very easy if you've been doing a few contests to sort of like Martin alluded to, to, to sort of get into a bit of a groove and sort of do exchanges really quickly and sort of new guys will go, whoa, 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 what's, whoa, 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 sort of don't want to be that person. So sometimes got to be prepared to just sort of take it easy and explain to people how it all works. And we've all made oopses with logs, so just sort of bear with people and make it all sort of work. Um, I think it's good to obviously have bands be used. Now they all use them or lose them. Um, and again, supporting the sort of a collaborative effort for everybody and, and meeting new people. In fact, I quite often only talk to people once a year and it's normally sort of August, sort of second week in August. So. In fact, I speak often to Ron Mann and it's normally, oh, it must be RD contest time again. So. And a competitive spirit, it is a contest after all. So, probably a little bit of overlap with some of these points. Um, two sort of types of the sort of VHF contesting, the sort of field day type things. Uh, an opportunity to get out and about from your normal station. Um, you can do different categories, six hour or 24 hours. 24 hours in the mountain, eh, Hayden? Mm. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, off you go. <laughs> no, we'll do it. Um, different categories, QRP, phone, CW, digital. Um, as a lot of the other guys have done, the roving, where you sort of jump in your car and go from different grid squares can be sort of quite fun. Um, Probably a different sort of whole thing in the field day to, to sort of normal contesting. Um, and then of course you can operate from your home station as well. And I think for all of the VHF, UHF contests you can sort of do one or the other and sort of whatever works. You know, sometimes crazy people go up the mountain and we just like to have people sort of come out into their shacks and, and, and sort of come on. So, but I think there's, portable can be sort of good fun. Can be. So here's a um, couple of uh, pictures of Murray's field day thing, so you don't have to, to have it o overly complex. That sort of works remarkably well. Uh, so just basically um, taking a handheld to an elevated spot um, or a mobile radio. Uh, or you can take a van full of Yagi antenna, network laptops, microwave dishes, transverters, masthead amps, generators, heaters, and you'll end up being in the disturbed individual category. Like a few of us in this room. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, who else would be in the snow on the mountain? So log keeping, That'll probably be a little bit of overlap with what Martin alluded to, but um, there are a couple of um, items. The, the paper logs are pretty much discouraged now so that they can um, do like log cross-checking and things with a Cabrillo format, which is pretty cool. Paper logs have probably got still a little bit of a place in respect sometimes if you go portable, like guys want to do a bit of soda stuff and they don't want to take a notebook, maybe you could just take a notepad or enter stuff in your phone, but then maybe be prepared to sort of do uh, post-contest uh, entry into the VKCL software, which works pretty well. Um, the VKCL software is really sort of quite good. Um, it's Martin alluded to it, works with OmniRig, which is really good because it... Um, really sort of avoids log errors. Um, VK5DJ does a, um, his logger, which apparently now supports OmniRig. I've not used that for a few years. I used to use it, and it was really good. And then I got introduced to VKCL and, sorry, VK5DJ, I'm, I'm a traitor. Um, there's an N1MM logger, uh, and there's a QRZ logger as well. And I think Ham Radio Deluxe does some logging, but I'm not familiar with those. I'm sure Ham Radio Deluxe would do it, but certainly not cheap. Um, that's pretty much the same page that Martin alluded to. Um, just pick out the sort of contest and you can either, for the VHF ones, normally you enter your, um, your grid square in there uh, and which particular category. Um, so that's again the main, the main page. Um, a little tip that I picked up and I'm sure others that have played VHF contesting. Remember that all FM contacts are green. <laughs> so if you log a contact and you press enter and you're on UHF VHF and it's not green, you've made an oops and you've <laughs> defaulted to the standard SSB. 
It's normally only about four or five contacts in. You actually look at the thing and you sort of go, oh, crap. So then you need to go back and quickly Can change it. That's when you fix it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I mentioned that further down the track. Later, you yeah. Have to yeah. <laughs> or, run or you speak three hours later. That contact I had back with you six hours ago. It's like, <laughs> fix it when you realise it's wrong. <laughs> so look, there's lots of stories I'm told people could talk about um, contest logging software where you are sure you've worked someone on a particular band and computer says no. And sometimes it's just too hard. Um, as Martin alluded to two over on the right hand side, there's a the little yeah. cut off bit which um, shows the, the, the band that you're on, how many QSOs you've done and as you change band on your radio that little thing jumps up and down and makes sure you're on the right band and of course the right mode which is pretty helpful. Um, three little bits, uh, sort of in a bit more detail, the OmniRig sort of setup, which obviously uh, you need to, as Martin said, download and install as a separate thing. And then there's the OmniRig settings. You can have two radios, which sort of works quite well. I just had mine set up for the ICOM 9100, which is pretty good because you can work from 160 metres to 23 centimetres and it remembers. There is a way of setting up um, transverter switching, and I haven't made that go yet, so. Um, but it's a bit more of a detailed view of the contact summary. Okay, so we've all heard about grid squares. Uh, in VHF and UHF contests, they're sort of used as a bit of a, um, a method of determining distance of, of the contact. I'm pretty sure it basically works on the centre of each grid square. So um, it's all sort of quite, quite clever. The easiest way to do it is to just get an app. Um, and as you can see that one there, that app called Ham GPS, which will spit out uh, to quite a number of places, probably almost approaching the one we saw at Gibbs Tech that time, Justin, where if you take three steps, you're actually in another grid square. Um, it was a very interesting talk. It was, yes. <laughs> but look, it's pretty important to, um, to know what your grid square is, and, and um, the easiest way, I'm sure pretty much everybody would have an app to discover what that is. Um, Okay, so <laughs> three cheers for Baldrick <laughs> indeed. So a few, see, you need to have a bit of a plan, um, as, as Martin alluded to. Having a plan is good. Probably a few things are sort of familiar to me, and I'm sure they're familiar to people in this room. Have a test run, make sure everything's all sort of working. Don't rely on memory because you discover that an antenna is not working very well on the day of the contest, and you really should have probably not got that far. Um, the log keeping software, if you're familiar with it, then it's not so bad, but if you're going to try something new, then probably have a few dummy runs. Um, have a bit of a rest if you plan to do the 24 hours. Uh, as Martin said, as you get older, it gets harder and harder to stay up all night. Um, I always keep a bit of a notepad, sort of for scribblings of antenna headings for, for if we work in the microwave bands and, and even 23 centimetres of where you need to point to work different stations. Sometimes you'll be trying to trying to call Gary down there and you're pointing the wrong way so you need to make sort of notes of where where people are. Um, if you discover a logging issue, fix it now, <laughs> as in now, now. And it's, it's amazing sometimes you can be looking at a log and something will pop into your head, you'll go, I'll just work Justin on 5.7 gigs. He doesn't have 5.7 gigs. So I make it blue, so. Um, have as many bands going as you can to try not miss a random contact. Now for those that have done a bit of VHF, UHF contesting, having 6270, 1296, 2.4, 3.4 and 10 gigs all going at the same time can be quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think that many, many people would come up on those microwave bands in VK7, but trust me. When you're just trying to write down the, the exchange with someone on two metres, the other three bands will fire up and you'll miss it. Um, I like Martin's idea of the different bands in headphones, that sounds great. I just have to sort of try and have as many radios and you get to know where they uh, have the speakers above the radio so you can hear where the noise comes from. Um, a few people here would probably attest to this that I've texted them and said to come on, coerce your mates into coming on and helping out the group. Sometimes if things are a bit slow you can, it's marvellous, you can text people or ring them and say, is your radio working? <laughs> Um, 
Time's pretty important. Again, um, it's pretty important. Look for the double point opportunities and maximise uh, in the RD contest. I think we've all probably fallen into the trap of you hear someone on, you make a contact, and you go, oh, I should have waited 10 minutes, and it would have been triple points. Um, and, of course, that's the time to make sure you've got all the 23 centimetre and a gov gear and skeds all sort of organised. Um, it's amazing. Triple point, like 23 centimetres above each contact is six points. Double points, I'm three, yeah, so six points. So we've got 23 people. Of, we've had 23 on 23, so we could, we could make some big scores if... They're all on between one and six. So a few things that I've learned. Uh, preparation. You can never do too much preparation. Um, yeah. um, Ben's just put in there just before you go on. Um, yay, and when Richie texts you at 3 a.m. in the morning, I get grumpy. I've never texted him at three. I might have texted him at one. <laughs> right, it's one o'clock. That's one, that's one. Um, but Ben's always been pretty, pretty good and come on. Um, so need to prepare, um, read and understand the rules as Martin alluded to, they change and sometimes the repeat, the rework times can change and you can assume that you're trying to work every two hours and it's now every three or, or, or vice versa. Um, don't sit in the pile up waiting for that last call in the group, move on and get them later. Ask me how I know this because it's very easy to... You hear a whole bunch of people on a particular channel and you just think, I'll work these couple of guys and then I'll move on. Yeah, don't, because you'll be stuck there for ages. Listen to the little voice in your head that just says, move on, come back. Um, sensible food and drink, like everybody knows what works for them, whether it's caffeine, whether it's whiskey or, or whatever. Um, posture, move about. Yeah, it's amazing how you can sort of sit in a chair um, Mine's probably not very ergonomic. I liked Martin's setup. We had the, the computer in the middle and the two radios each side so you can just move side to side. I sort of had laptop on this side and a couple of radios here. And it's amazing how after 24 hours you realise that you probably shouldn't have done that. Um, and, yeah, try and keep awake from the wee small. Sometimes idle conversation in the wee small hours can keep you awake. Sometimes not. Sometimes I remember calling Murray a few times and... He was asleep. But anyway. Well, can I add there? He was asleep, but he's... Yeah, he still won. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for reminding me of that, Justin. Um, <laughs> just lucky, I guess. Age and youth, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, check your log entry. And check it again before you hit save. Um, if you're using OmniRig, it takes away a few of the doubts. But just make sure you haven't rolled a finger on a, on a key and typed in, you know, a wrong call sign. Because uh, the beauty of modern technology is it'll repeat it for you. And it'll copy the error. Especially with grid squares. If you get someone's grid square wrong, it'll just keep getting it wrong. It's just great. So here's a couple of um, field day portable stations. Um, bit snowy up the mountain. Don't even quite know how that was open, actually. But uh, so that's up. Uh, my first, I think it was probably the first crack at a winter field day. There was a few. I don't. I think I had a 23 centimetre yagi, but I don't think I had a feed on. I think there might have been a small packing and um, <laughs> error. Hands up those that have not gone portable and forgotten a connector or a lead or something. Um, that was pretty cool. I was able to work into Launceston on 10 gigs, which was pretty, pretty flash. Uh, the other photo on the, on the right is uh, a few of us on a hill just, um, just near Kingston trying to work into ZL one early morning before work. I think that photo was at about 6am-ish. So um, it looks all quite flash, but I don't think we worked on any of the high bands. I think we worked into ZL on Two metres and 70 centimetres, I think. I don't think we made it on 23 centimetres. Well, not from there. Not from there. But, but nonetheless, that we, there's a lot of kit there. Passers-by just have a good look. they quite amused. Uh, another couple of field day ones. Um, on the left is, is our um, Murray and I went affordable for the winter field day not long back with a, a, a van that's sort of specifically set up for playing radio. It's got a, a 10 metre telescopic mast that comes out of the middle of it. Um, 
and we've done a bit of work in making an operating position in there for two people that can stay nice and toasty warm with the aid of a heater and a generator. It was occasionally three. Occasionally three, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we had to have, have, have a quick deodorant check before the third person was allowed in, but it was really good, worked really well. Although, when the sun goes down in the winter at 1100 metres above sea level, it gets cold really quickly. Ask us how we know that. <laughs> um, another photo on the right there is um, Hayden and I went portable up the east coast. What was the name of the place, Hayden? Uh, Three Thumbs Lookout. Three Thumbs Lookout, yeah, where we um, worked into ZL on... 2 metres, 70 centimetres, 12.96 and 2.4, which was pretty... 2.4 was CW, that was... Hmm. Yeah, that was interesting. It was good fun. So here's a couple of stations. I'm sure... I don't know who they belong to, but maybe that's that one. You talked about Martin, that... No. no but it was just... You don't need to have that sort of station. It'd probably be nice. So there's a few results from how we've done in, in the contest. That was the 2018 um, contest. Now, just of late, we've sort of done quite well. Um, it's a bit hard to see, but that one, um, Vince won that one, I think, and Steve was in sort of third, and uh, Herman was standing in sort of, it was all the highlighted ones are all VK7s, which was pretty good. Um, we had a pretty good team that year with Vince and Murray and myself. We managed to uh, sort of win that one, but there was lots of lots of VK7, so hopefully um, it's good to see so many on. A few little bit of trivia from the 2020 RD contest. The first three place getters were VK7s. Um, QRP section was was um, taken up. Uh, was third was Ben VK7 BN, and in the mix was um, VK7 KPC. And then in the 2019 RD contest, I think. Um, we had sort of first, first, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fifteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth, which was a probably a pretty reasonable effort for that sort of um, contest. So we're doing sort of pretty well, I think. Um, a few of the magazines I've been reading at home from 2011, 2012, there wasn't a lot of VK sevens sort of showing up in many of the VHF contests. So I think we've sort of Turned a bit of a corner. We're just upsetting all the others. They'll probably ban us from going in it or something. Um, so the contest's over. What do you do now? Normally the, the last round, especially for the RD, is people sort of, normally when they make the last contact and it's all over, so I thank everybody for their efforts and it's all a bit sort of calmer and everyone's blood pressure gets back to normal. That last sort of half hour in the RD is normally a bit pretty sort of full on. Um, double check your log. Um, remember those notes you made at 3 a.m. The contact should have been on SSB, not FM, etc. You know, if you haven't changed, change it now. Check your log again, and as I said, look for silly things that look a bit out of the ordinary that you know people haven't got a particular band. Just then submit the log before you get up and move, because pretty much all those contests you have the ability with VKCL to be able to hit submit log and have it go and you'll get an acknowledgement via email. Um, it has been a bit problematic on a few occasions, but yeah, sort of try and get that done then. You don't have to worry about it. Um, pitch the radios off, chill out, and perhaps a serve of your favourite beverage. And that the is all she wrote. So, questions, for Trick. questions. make them easy, please. I've asked a really obvious one. Presumably, the, when you make a contact, it's exactly the same as we're doing in the winter field day, which is just five nine number and call sign. Look, the, they're all pretty much exactly that, Lee. The the only one that's a little bit different and it's quite unique is the is the RD contest, where your exchange is is not a sequential number that starts at one and goes up. It's actually it used to be, but then they changed it because, as I'm sure you're aware, in a lot of the contests, if if you start off a bit late or whatever, it can be pretty. Um, uh, sort of scary if you're going to give someone 001 and someone's going to give you 653, you're like, oh crap. So a lot of people, they thought it was a bit psychological, so they thought, because it was the friendly contest, I think the plan was, was the exchange now you give is the number of years that you've been licensed. So you could have six contacts or 800 and no one would know, and I think it probably makes it a little bit more 
you don't sort of drop your bundle when you've, you think you're doing all right working 200 and then you work someone that's got 600 and you go, that's it, I'm going home. And it's pretty so, cool when you hear someone say 59060 or something like that and you're like, 60 years, you've been like, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got we've got a few in in VK7 that have been licensed sort of quite long, so it's it's sort of pretty cool. But yeah, look, as far as I'm aware, all of the VHF UHF ones are all all sequential and all different, except um the yeah, the RD. So yeah, so you start at start at double one and sort of just go up. Yeah, so there was a, I'm sure there was a point where they they had in the rules that it didn't have to start at. 001 and there was a bit of shenanigans going on where people could sort of play games and have a little bit of a mental edge by actually starting at 300. But and I always, if I hear someone say in RD 001, I say I take the time to say thank you for joining in the contest. That's right, yeah. Because it's their first year, it's their yeah. first time, you know, on the contest. So that's right, that's right. Encourages them for next year. Mm. Yep. Mm. So, anybody else have any questions? Um, just a comment, Richard. Comment. One of the things um, probably you do is well before the contest starts is update your contest software. Look, one of the key things that Mike's built into VKCL yep. is it goes off and sees. And has a look to see if it, to yeah. Because obviously the rules are updated and, and things um, in it. Because you can be operating the contest and if you're operating with an old version and they've changed the rules and it's not reflected, yeah. um, you potentially you end up... And you could also mess a lot of other people up as well. Oh, so, yeah. Um, so, but VKCL re it really does, um, it goes off and checks. And yep. also, both VKCL with Mike, uh, AAV, 3AAV, and 5DJ, they operate in the contest. Yeah, that's right. And yep. when I contest, contacted them, you think of Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool when you can work on Because you realise. I'm using your software. Have actually written this yeah. software. I think or, another. Uh, or the contest manager, if you hear that oh, one. Yeah. I think another important thing to mention too, along that line, is to is to make sure that the, your PC clock is set accurately. Um, I know most of the VHF guys that sort of plays um, weak signal stuff with WSJTX and whatever have normally got either sort of GPS sort of synchronisation things, or they use net time and sort of are within a few sort of milliseconds of the right time, but. Yeah, you just want to make sure because if it's right up to the knocker, you don't want to be sort of entering someone's call sign. It just goes, "Sorry, the contest finished." So, um, yeah, just make sure your your clock is adjusted sort of right. Which so one of the question as well then, um, just because again, it's my first time. Um, can we still work? Can we still work different um, locators? So, for example, last time in a field day, worked with you guys for an hour or two, and now I transferred down to Rosny Hill. Is that still allowed? That's yeah, that's that's what you, you're called a rover if you do that. So there's there's different um, categories that you can go in, and you can go in multiple categories. So you can spend a few hours roving around, giving out numbers in different places, or you can then go home and sort of, you know, it's probably best not to try and enter too many categories. But um, yeah, like sometimes it's good fun to go out and about. So no, my like silly questions, but <laughs> no, no, they're not silly. No questions are silly. <laughs> I'll just add one thing uh, on the log. The um, VKCL is a post-event section where you can actually do your log later because I'm like a hopeless um, person, <laughs> one finger poker. <laughs> And there's ten contacts gone by the time I yeah. went to do it by keyboard. So I don't think I, I, I don't think you're alone there, Garrett. It's, it's not I, quite often you'll actually hear someone entering. You'll hear it going VK7. Yep, SSB. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> but I'm too slow. I'm even too slow for that. I'm faster writing. Admittedly, it's a bit of a pain if you do a big log, but I I can scribble faster and make more notes faster with a pen and paper. Yep. And then put the log in later. Yep. It's no, that's the way I go because yep. I'm just so hopeless. And I'm in a little bit of a confined area to a certain extent. For yep. No, as for long as you can read your read your shorthand. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you can correct. People that have made a mistake with their keyboard take a while to get back in there and correct. Yeah. It. You've already done that. You can actually just scribble it with a pen and write on it. Yep. So just use a different colour pen for a different no, hand a, or whatever. And that's a good that. plan. Good plan. I think the, the portable guys I think often do that because they don't want to take a laptop yeah. up to the top of a hill or something. So. I want to go through the common frequencies for this. 
those are not sure that what we use? Look, um, I, I've prepared something that's going on the broadcast on Sunday. Um, what we're going to try and do this year, because we've had a lot of um, uh, a lot of people on two metres and seventy centimetres, probably two metres has got very busy. So what I'm proposing this year, a few of us, is that not only do we have channel fifty or one forty six five hundred, that we also use one forty six five two five. So if if you set up a bit of a scan group to just add a, that frequency to it, and and depending on the busyness, maybe on 439 as well, go to 439.025, so that if you if you come along and there's like a string of people working, you can just sort of flick up another channel, and if a few people know that that's going to be a thing, then, you know, you can maybe call on, if someone's busy on channel 50, you can call on 146.525, and chances are there'll be somebody listening, and you can sort of flick between the two and maybe keep things a bit more fluid and a bit more mobile, so there's Propose those two frequencies, so 146.500 and 146.525, 439 and 439.025. Uh, I think on 6 metres, 52.525 is probably a good one, unless anyone wants to use um, SSP, so it would be 50.150. Unless you're an H call, we can go to 52.150. Um, and then of course the others really 1296 and up is pretty much just FM on 1296 150 and uh, the frequencies above that pretty much the 150 sort of mark so but I think um, we're going to try and hopefully hear a few people on HF and get the band dance happening but that's a bit hard to nail down frequencies because they can be in use but I think if we employ our reasonably successful Explain technique the band dance, okay, the band dance is something that probably comes back to a bit of a Vince. I think, I think Vince is sort of the band dance uh, owner. A few of us got together and we thought, oh, while we're chatting on two metres, why don't we all see if we can work on 10 metres? So we nominated a frequency of 28, 470 or something. So before we knew it, there was like 10 or a dozen people there. So we all worked each other and we went, oh, what about 15 metres, 20 metres? 40 metres, 80 metres, 160 metres. And it's amazing how many points you can rack up, um, especially on 160 metres where it's all double points. It, um, there's a fairly fine line between a well-oiled band dance machine and a complete catastrophe, because if you have too many, then you fall into the old trap of sitting around waiting for contact. So I think last year, I remember there was a few groups that would sort of like you'd stroll across these few channels on HF and you'd hear the same sort of few people so um, there's no real probably sort of hard fast rules with that just sort of try and get on it and, um, but yeah I think the band dance works pretty well Vince's idea worked really well no, just all in all have some fun that's the main important thing is to have some fun oh teams ah teams good point team, feel free to form teams um, I think you need to, um, I think you probably need to let them know before the contest yes. yeah. Yeah. to register a team and it can be I think three or I don't, three people. Yeah, three. three people. Um, and look, there's a lot of people in this room that have scored really, really, really well um, in contests so there'd be no real reason why theoretically we couldn't have three or four winning teams. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. But look, that's a good plan, and you can always have um, sort of new guys can sort of join teams. Or yeah, I think that's a good idea. Teams are good. We've had a pretty good team the last last couple of years. So can they be geographically separate? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. You, the three yeah. people separately yeah. operate. Right, and then all the their scores are combined. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh. okay. It and a, it's all about prestige. There's no, there's no prize for a team. No. It's about prestige. Correct. Oh, there's a certificate. There's a certificate. Yeah. But last so. year there was only three teams across the whole of the. Yeah, that's right. So with the with the teams, it's just still the three stations are operating exactly the same individually. It's just a. Long yeah. Team and then the so just basically, if 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 you submit a team that's got you know yourself and Steve and Herman together, just at the end of it, what will happen is they'll just grab the three scores and add them together and yeah. you just got to nominate a team name. Come and up with a funky team name. Yeah. Come up, yeah. That's what we got. Cronies plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Long story. But Hayden's the plus one. <laughs> so. All right. Cool. No worries.
we show appreciation to Richard. Thank you very much.